This program is a Warren Stiebel production in association with South Carolina ETV. Funding for Firing Line is made possible by a major grant from the John M. Olin Foundation, Incorporated. Additional support is provided by the Annenberg Foundation and the Friends of Firing Line. <laughs> We're gathered here at George Washington University to uh, probe the question, has the women's uh, movement gone uh, uh, too far? And uh, we have uh, seven very accomplished uh, uh, guests. In fact, they are so accomplished that uh, I am enforcing on myself the discipline of just barely identifying them as I present them. On my right is uh, Professor Elizabeth Fox Genovese of uh, Emory University, a prolific author. Um, Next to her is uh, Ariana Statinopoulos Huffington, a distinguished author uh, of the female women was her, uh, one of her, her first books. Uh, Helen Alvarez with the National Conference of, of Catholic uh, uh, Bishops, specializing in uh, anti-abortion uh, um, activity. Uh, Miss uh, Catherine Colbert is uh, with the Center of Reproductive reproduction law and policy uh, and is uh, vigorously engaged on the other side of, of that uh, question. Uh, Professor um, uh, Camille Paglia is uh, with the University of Arts in Philadelphia. Her most recent book is Vamps uh, uh, and, uh, and Tramps. Betty Friedan, uh, identified as the mother of the feminist movement, is of course the author of The Feminine Mystique. And uh, Judge Karen Bernstein is uh, Recently, the family court judge of, of, of Brooklyn, uh, active in this and almost um, all other public controversies. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I know, Professor Fox Anavisa, that um, you have said you endorse entirely, or pretty much fully, the aims specified by Betty Friedan when she wrote her seminal book, but that you see the movement as having departed from its original uh, uh, aims. To, why, why, do you, wh why do you say that? What, are, what, what is this departure that uh, you deplore? Well, first let me say that um, that original women's movement has succeeded brilliantly. I, it is frequently said that the 1980s were a backlash against women, yet during the 1980s, women went from earning 63 cents on the male doll it, dollar to earning 95 or more cents on the male dollar for entry-level positions. This is no social group in history has revolutionized their status in comparable fashion. Yeah, you're, not, it, you're not telling me what I asked you, right? But I'm go to, getting what to... What the departure is. The departure is that that has not been felt to be enough that women still worry about the problems of difference. And equal opportunity has not produced equality in the sense of identity. There still are girls who feel like girls and boys who feel like boys and, heaven forbid, some men who like football and all kinds of dangerous no, wait things a you're, 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 not, you're not saying that uh, Judge Bernstein is against boys playing football, are you? I haven't asked her about that, but Why I not? have none. No, I think that a girl who'd like to play football ought to have a chance to go out and, and do it, at least when she's a little girl. I mean, and frankly, I suppose what I really believe is that, uh, that nobody, not the women's movement in my view, it, it wasn't from the beginning and isn't at this moment about uh, trying to repeal biology, uh, but it is to try to understand uh, our biology and its complications uh, and the immense variety of human experience that exists and it is to give people <coughs> some space to be it, who I, they I have a very are. concrete thing to ask you because yeah, it happened sure. that I was at the, at the house of the Secretary of Health and Welfare under Carter yeah. and he said you know 
Last Christmas Eve, I expected to spend a happy time with my family, but it wasn't a very happy time because I had to rule on whether our subsidy of the University of Arizona should be withdrawn on the grounds that not as the same percentage of women were playing basketball as men. How did we get into that mess? Um, because when you try to quantify, when you try to specify um, answers to problems that are extraordinarily, um, uh, that are problems that are real and, and that are difficult ones, you frequently can end up in, in, in matters that are at, at points which are... Well, is there defective legislation there that says... Uh, Look, the, the, legislation, the legislation that says, for example, that what we ought to do when we spend money, public money, to provide opportunities to kids is not provide opportunities that are gender-based or to exclude one set of the population from opportunities that we would provide to others. It does not say, and you know, in some ways it's like the abortion debate, it doesn't say what a right to choose says is not you must have an abortion. It is that you have a right to choose what, in this peculiar circumstance, which is only something women have, what will happen to, to your, uh, you know, ultimately whether you'll be a mother or not. And the same thing, just a minute, yeah. is when you talk about, uh, uh, you know, a, a sports education, it doesn't say you can't have a school in which four girls want to play basketball and 15 boys want to play basketball. You have to get rid of that school. If only four girls want to play basketball, Four girls should have an opportunity to play basketball. But, but this, this great big grown man, who was a cabinet officer under Carter, said, in fact, the petition uh, uh, pleading a law had asked him to withdraw the subsidy for that reason. Uh, is that def uh, Betty, is that defective legislation? Look, I mean, or is this it's fanaticism? It's wonderful that girls are now having uh, opportunity to engage in the sports and the training. That, uh, my boys, I, I have two sons and a daughter, and I remember with the... the the boys, it seemed to me, learned almost as much when they were in the little league and playing basketball and playing football and all that as they did in school. And then at that point, my daughter, the, they gave her a little calisthenic class or a dance class or something. So it's wonderful that we have the opportunity now for girls what, to, what, to be an athletic. What, what Don't quibble so, Bill. Wait a minute. Don't quibble I just so. Know. What, These things are real relevant, the kind of things. I'm, wait, I'm but, trying to remember Bill, when, when my sisters were not engaged in sports at school. And they've been, they began going to school around 1931. Uh, why did the federal government have to get involved in whether women were engaged in sports? I'll tell you, right, I'll tell you why. Sports. Sports. And I think Somebody if you ask the question, how do we get into this mess? And we got into this mess because universities right. across this nation spent millions of dollars on male sports programs and spent no money whatsoever on women's sports uh -huh. programs. When I went to Cornell, and, and Helen left there 10 years later, but when I went to Cornell, the men had a steam room, and the women didn't. The men had professional teams and money being put into their sports. They had scholarships to do those sports, and women didn't. That's well, is, why that the federal government isn't got that, involved. Isn't that the aspect of the marketplace? Because people don't uh, go to the stadium to watch uh, women play basketball. Well, one of the reasons... No, 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 wait a second now. No, no, they do right. if... No, that, no, that, no, I have to say, okay, I, I'm speaking here. Uh, there, there's no doubt that in the period before Betty Friedan, you know, wrote her very, in, her, her, her epical uh, first work, The Feminine Mystique, uh, we, we women were forced to be content with half-court basketball. We couldn't even, we were, we were regarded as so defective, so weak, we couldn't even go the full court um, in order to, you know, to play regular basketball. We had no access to weight training. We had no access to anything. Now, it's very important that, that uh, women, uh, just what B Betty said, women have the opportunity to develop team skills because that, would go, that redounds against women later on, to rise in a corporation, to, to do well on committees. I'm terrible on committees because I never had a chance to play uh, team sports. I, I didn't have access to weight. However, I, it, 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 it has didn't. to be said, again, it has to be Imagine said. Imagine what would happen then. It has then. to be said, okay, that, okay, here we are 25 years down the line in feminism, all right? It, we, people do not turn out in droves to watch women's team yeah. sports. Yeah. There's only a few schools well, in the nation. Show. But we don't have a market yet. There's a tremendous, the, 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 the yeah. people who still want to watch men play no, wait, you wait can't wait socialize in a society oh. in which bo please look the it. truth is you grow up in a society in which sports are a male occupation and sports are not a, a women's occupation for a very long time for example women no one watched women's tennis and they began to didn't they no but the point we, we want to watch one-on-one on one. We, we we love women's and tennis what? because one-on-one on one. no what i'm saying is okay we have to start asking questions that are not politicized anymore okay if, if we want in basketball okay it, it embarrasses me actually to watch women's teams compared to the quality of the men's teams even on the junior high school level okay right, it, it's well known that if you, if you what let's let's stop the segregation in tennis let's stop it right now let's have integrated and you'll see that the top 100 men in tennis will beat 
the number one woman. That is the reality. But come, wait a second. First of all, let's make some distinctions here. The federal government doesn't say you're, you know, you're not allowed to have a, a football league, uh, although it doesn't help. Oh no! Wait, but but how but the, play but, against are the best but men. In not football. by the point. The point is, it's not about that. No, it's about. It has to do with, it has to do with litigation in the universities the women for the amount of money it's much more for for women. Women than that. What there what? has to be is opportunity for girls who want to use their bodies in sports to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You all agree with that? Doesn't but everybody is dancing around the real question, which is quotas. Are you in favor of quotas? Do you believe, as the National Organization of Women believe, that true equality will not have been achieved until you have 50% of Congress people being women and 50% of everything being women? Do you believe in that or not? Well, that's, I, not, that's a slightly different question, isn't it? It is a different question. But it is the whole issue of when is equality well, achieved? And at what well, point do you give yeah, equal I think okay, we, we, we know that believe. at West Point and Annapolis, they've got yeah. to lower the standards of physical uh, uh, tests because they have to, because women are weaker than men. Now, if that's going to be reflected in how they engage in sports, and people flock to see men engage in sports, then you've got a, a, a difficulty, don't you, with the Procrustean uh, assignment yes. of saying, I'm not going to give $100,000 to the University of Arizona unless they have 50-50 women, men basketball players. No, so but there's lots of different ways to encourage women in a variety of sports. And the point is, is that universities shouldn't be allocating all their resources to men or substantial resources to men, especially when participation in athletics is tied to your ability to go to school. Because what happens is, in those same universities, men get scholarships to attend the school and what women we, don't. Okay, what are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? The, well, the what we've begun to do about the, it is, in we fact... Know that, that we know that there's a lot of scholarship money right. available to male athletes. Right. And we know that males are preternaturally equipped to engage in athletics. What are we going to do about it? Well, I don't know if they're pretty. Well, what you they, they, pull, they pull in the alum, they pull in alumni, they pull they pull in huge audiences. Yeah. The amount of money pouring money in, that they the amount of money in? pouring into the universities from, from the, the, men, the men's they football even program. Exceeded. I speak as a football fan, okay, fanatical football fan. I, I'm one of the few feminists uh, who is a football. Oh, wait a second here. Lots of us like. I don't know how we are. I don't think this is a major question. I don't isn't. think it's at the core of the question. It really is a major question. Okay, let's go back to Ms. Huff. She's elevated at least away from the biological problem that women aren't as strong as men. However, uh, women are as smart as men. So does that mean that we ought to look forward to a legislature that is 50 percent uh, uh, women? Or is that, uh, is that uh, an abstraction yes. uh, which we have to um, uh, avoid? I know, listen, Bill, let's, let's, let's not bandy around these generalizations so easily. What did I bandy around? We're not around? talking no, about no, generalizations. No. We're talking about in, in some respects, in some respects, women are not as strong as men, but women live eight years longer than men on the average in this country. That's, that's and because if, of your Given book. your age and mine, <laughs> you know, women are as strong as men. They are stronger. No, are, no, no. Uh, they, they have more stamina than men. Exactly. And they, and they outlive and, them. And, and, and did you say women are not as smart as men? No, oh, no. He didn't dare he say didn't, that. He wouldn't dare say that. Uh, we, we, you know, with regard to women's representation in Congress, it makes very simple on the surface sense to say that the country will have come to its senses when in Congress the gender represents the percentage of women who are there, or approximately 50 percent. And I guess in the absence of other more easily, you know, defined indicia of equality, I don't think it's a bad one. On the other hand, you don't hold to it firmly. That's you don't say it's a but-for indicia of equality. It would be one if it occurred. On the other hand, if there are not particular qualified candidates in a particular it's, it's area... It's a paradigm. Yes, That's it's, right. it is, but it's not well, the but-for well, no, what, what you do make with this, uh, George Gilder citing two women scholars says that uh, 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 men are by nature uh, more competitive. More com and, George and, Gilder... And, 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 and this, this is something that's transcribable at age three. Under the circumstances, since politics is, generally speaking, a highly competitive business, more men than women are likely to prevail for this reason. Is that sensible? Yeah, no, I, I agree that a lot of women stay out of public life because of the abuse you have to take in, in the arena, as I would say, all right? Yeah. I think a lot of women are driven out of public discourse, not because of, of male chauvinism, but because of the crap you have to take if you go off there. That's why I think it is important for them to have sports training. In, in I, the know what you said about Hillary. I'm, 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 I know what you said about Hillary. I know what you said about Hillary, what you were about Hillary going to see her sick uh, father, and uh, 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 that wasn't very kind. But the fact that you said it suggests that um, she should expect it to be said, right? Well, she's in charge of health care. That, that's all my point was. 
Uh, and if you're going to if you're going to have a, a political function uh, in this age of jet planes, I felt that uh, to sit 16 days uh, by the bedside of your father was it was not it was not the right moment, okay, for that kind of a return. This um, but this but is incredibly tendentious well, this argument. What do we value? You know, why is competitiveness such a wonderful thing? Is being a congressperson such a wonderful thing? Are these the things that we absolutely value? You know, this is really at the heart of what but, we are talking about. But you know, Ariana, you're not being fair because nobody said, you see, that's what, again, I think Helen said it exactly. She said, there's nothing such a terrible idea of having as a, a general standard. If this world, if men and women were on balance, you know, parts, equal parts of the human race, then, you know, you, they distribute themselves equally across all the occupations that uh, men and women get engaged in. I mean, they wouldn't. There would be no male wet nurses uh, absent uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We can agree on that. Well, it and, is true. And there would probably be no women sperm donors. But I mean, you know, outside of that arena, there were, basically there's work that men and women can do. So, so that's not a bad measure. But it isn't a quota. Nobody says nobody that says? if we don't have 50% of says. women. Oh, Karen, nobody. No, there, nobody, oh, yeah, nobody, this, nobody, no, this, nobody, this, nobody, this, this, nobody this, has this, that this, kind of quota. This is women the are now this is equal the to yeah, yeah, men. Women, yeah, women, yeah, 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 women oh, occupy. Oh, 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 it is, no, it really is like watching. I know there's no quota about how many college seats are given to women, but women, because they're conscious, now makes them aspire. They do occupy half of the college seats. There no, is no quota that we says women should be 40% of law school because they have the new consciousness to aspire. They are now 40% of the law school. When you calm down enough to listen, Karen right. said, nobody says. She did not say I, well, whether I, there are or yeah, there yeah. aren't. You somebody said, might said. say it. Somebody but might say it. As a general I, I have rule. to say, no, I have to say here, Ariane is quite correct. You hear this constantly from the, from the, from the, from the unfortunately, the, the, the people who have succeeded you at, at now and so on. Constantly. constantly. That, 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 that it, is, it is one of the biggest canards. It is probably every weekly. And I think your president no. called it bean counting. At I, some I point. think the yeah, whole well, point it, it of this, is though. bean counting. And where it appears is at the level of appointments. I think all of you, at my great astonishment, are seriously selling short women's capacity for competition, for aggression, for success. They are 55% of the college population. Right. And this the is a is more here. relevant skill for politics than, than many others as a starting point. I'm not the least bit worried about women's making their way into the legislative process. To me, the issue is, could we please just let them make their way? Right, and that's, I think, that, that's the critical issue. Because there are disadvantages that women suffer in joining the political process. And as a general rule, women candidates have contributions at a much lower rate. They have a much harder time proving themselves as credible candidates. Working in the party system is taken for granted. For women, when men do it, they get rewarded. When women do it, they don't. So there's lots so of disadvantages. Women have, a, have, have a, a, a unique distraction, children, right? Well, they do. And it, frankly, we don't hold men to the same standard we hold women to. That is, right, well, women that candidates have to take care of their children. Male candidates don't. Yeah, that That's is a great unanswered. And, and to me, that ought to be, it's what other women say ought to be, it's what Ms. Magazine reflects in its polls ought to be, at the center of the questioning about women today, is are we addressing the central question in their soul, <laughs> which is, and, and it's after you have that first baby and your emotions are all wrapped up in trying to be a good mother, and you are still a woman who likes to work. You know, a lot of people are addressing right. women who oh, have to work. To work. Yeah. But those who psychologically need to work or financially need to work, the financial need, that's sort of okay. The psychological need is not being addressed. And You're a lawyer, so aren't you? women, I'm a lawyer, yes. yes. You don't have a, a need to use the Oh, yes, see, yeah, I do. Oh, I'm saying I absolutely now. do. Yeah. So women have. You don't to me, the, right these to questions the go to what the heart of what Catherine is saying, too. These built in disadvantages that women have, this, this additional responsibility for children that is not merely imposed, it weighs on their soul. They have taken it into themselves. And I think, Helen, we may have found something we can agree on, which is uh, very shocking. But I think what you're really saying is that the stereotypes that have operated to discriminate against women 
have to be broken down in a variety of different ways. And one of those stereotypes is that, or, that operated for many years is that women could only stay home and take care of their children. It has to be when addressed you break that down, okay. I, I but when you, you break that down, you also have to say that some women will want to, others w women right. will not, and that men will want to as well. But and that's the part we haven't but gotten. But let me just finish the answering, Catherine. What I'm seeing is a society that there's too much polarization on the question of the working woman. The mommy wars are a reality, I'm telling you. And the backlash from the denigrating of the at-home mother is that the at-home mother is really taking it out on the working mother now. What needs to be done... The great majority was of women today that with little children are working both inside the home and outside and the I home. And I understand that. And they are statistic. doing it from a combination of real family economic mm -hmm. need as well, well as opportunity. I mean, just one final thought on that issue. When you address this question, it, it hasn't yet been done, I think, successfully in a way that also takes into consideration the best interest of the children and the family. Someone is telling... It's too extreme what's being said to women. Work to fulfill your soul, and the others are saying only being at home can really do it for you and the children. There must be a middle ground Alice, because I women are being constructed. I, I, I don't think that's I don't how this. they are instructed. I mean, I think that's the point we have to really stress here. That if you look at what Betty said in the beginning, it wasn't that women shouldn't be nurturing of their children. But may, may I, that's I what came across. That's not what she said. No. I think we want to be careful to be... I, I, I want to touch this at you because be only it seems to me, it seems to me, Betty, excuse me, Betty, excuse me, I think that one of the frictions that uh, uh, create uh, uh, antagonisms, um, uh, uh, actual and inchoate, between men and, and women, is that uh, the women's movement seems to accept uh, male paradigms yeah. uh, as uh, in, in indices of genuine success. Under the circumstances, they wince when you say, well, how many women are there in Congress? And you say, well, not nearly 50 percent. Well, it seems to me the mature position on that is it doesn't matter how many mm -hmm. women are. How many are, men are, are teaching kindergarten? It doesn't matter. Not, not at all. So long as there isn't actually a, a, an impediment to a woman who wants to go to Congress. Uh, a now, well, when, will when that, when will that maturity be achieved? Well, what I'm saying in my new book, In Vamps and Tramps, I'm talking yeah. about the, the glass ceiling, which... Um, uh, which definitely which, which exists, but I don't think it's existing because of male discrimination. But rather that women, it's up to women now to develop a persona of leadership. Yeah. That, that these are, are that right now women uh, are succeeding very well as, as as senators and as governors. But in order, let's say, to break through the glass ceiling to the presidency, I think that liberal progressive women, in particular, have to realize that conservative women and, and Republican women in in, um, in the world, as in America, are on the track for leadership because for some reason they are able to project. Um, the authority ne uh, necessary to be commander in chief. So I, I think that um, we have to we have to totally rethink right? uh, w women's uh, the way um, way, we, way we train women, let's say, for for, for public activity and, and for public discourse, and that and that and that, that there is something masculine, perhaps, uh, about authority from the top. Camille, would you consider the possibility that Republican <laughs> women, conservative women, are doing so well because they have the right ideas, not because they have the kind of right image? You know, that's the problem with this whole debate. Mm -hmm. People are in favor of the ideas that Republican women are representing, of smaller government, of more responsibility at the local level. And this whole question of what we value is at the center of that, because I have a five-year-old and I have a three-year-old. I went to get them dolls recently. The greatest craze is a new um, collection of dolls that includes every kind of doll you can imagine, a doll senator, doctor, everything you can imagine, but not a mom. A child care provider, yes, not a mom, because mothering is supposed to be only okay if you do it like a man, you know, nine to five and being paid for it. And this has been one of the most disastrous... That's interesting, because I went to the toy store for my daughter the other day, and all I saw was Mighty Morphin and, and, and G.I. Joe. I, I think that there's lots of different images out there, and frankly, you know, my daughter's friends still want to play with Barbie. Um, but I think that the whole point is, is that there's a range of options, and one of the reasons you don't see that collection of dolls with mom is because most of the other dolls are provided to teach her to mirror her own mothering, her, the mother in her family. And so you don't see her dressed up as mom because every other doll she has at home. But why are you all trying so hard to defend everything that's part of the women's movement? What is the problem with saying we don't like X, Y, Z about the women's movement? What you've all been saying is in this debate, well, I'll tell you what I don't something like. Something like, I'm sorry, Kathy, let me finish. It's like women's studies we don't like. 
Um, so all, the only, only me. No, I'm the only one who doesn't yeah. like it. But yeah. there are other people here who are nodding. And instead of saying, therefore, there is perhaps 50, 60, 70 percent of the women's movement who don't like, everybody's trying to defend the women's movement. The clearest analogy I can make is to Marxism. As Marxism was about to die, everybody was arguing in the same way. Like, well, this is not really Marxism, this is silliness. So these people do not really represent Marxism. And people uh. still wanted to call themselves Marxists. In the same way, there is some kind of psychological need in you all being part of the women's movement. Well, wait a second. Well, well, I, I think well, we're saying I something object very to the trivialization of this whole right. debate. I really do. I mean, this, this, we're in a much more serious situation than that. We are at a point where the women's movement has really changed life enormously in several generations. The possibilities well, of women to earn... Well, when's, when's and it is bad? But wait a minute, Bill. I want to finish. Mm. The possibilities of women to earn equally, to be in professions, to run for office and all the things, to have choice to be mothers and all that sort of thing. But now we face a really serious backlash. And I don't think previous strategies are going to meet this backlash. I think what's been happening, and you saw it in this, uh, the ugliness of this last election, that in the last five years, there has been, as a result of the corporate restructure and the job downsizing, men, college-educated white men, not just high school dropouts, not just minorities, have suffered a real loss in income for the first time Thank since you, the Depression. Thank you, Betty Sedan. Thank and you, ladies. And there is a backlash we'll, against ladies, women. We'll be, right, we'll be right back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next week on Firing Line, host Wendy Math Buckley Jr. and his guests conclude their heated discussion of the women's movement. This program was a Warren Stiebel production in association with South Carolina ETV. Funding for Firing Line was made possible by a major grant from the John M. Olin Foundation, Incorporated. Additional support was provided by the Annenberg Foundation and the Friends of Firing Line.